Good morning, everyone. It is my great pleasure to be here today um, to speak in front of the Thai conference. This is my favorite crowd because I love entrepreneurs and founders, because we are the ones who are changing the world. And today, I think you'll find my speech to be a little bit different than other speeches, which have been great. But other speakers, they might be speaking about artificial intelligence or machine learning. My goal today in my 15 minutes is to actually talk about, instead of artificial intelligence, your intelligence, and then your learning. For what I've found is that your mindset can be a huge differential in the course of your life. And with the right mindset, there are no limits to what we can achieve for so, much of, so many of the limits in life are self-imposed. And I personally know this because I've been through four pretty intense tragedies, and I've actually used these seemingly negative events to be very positive forces in my life. And then through that mindset, I've achieved a lot of personal happiness and then professional success. And what you'll find out is that they're oftentimes very correlated. Sometimes people feel that they need to be successful to be happy. It's actually the reverse. Harvard University found that if you have great happiness, there's a much higher probability of your being successful. So the key in life is to create your own life, to rise above events and circumstances, and through that, change the world and have great happiness as well. And what I'll be talking about is my personal experience um, in real estate and also my tragedies. But even though I'll be speaking of myself, the goal is that you learn from this, and I want to be a mirror to reflect your own greatness, and that hopefully some of these tips can help you achieve and rise to that next level as they have me. But first of all, I want to just introduce myself quickly on a professional level. So even though I'm in real estate, my background was not inherently there. Undergraduate, I was mathematics economics. My father was a math professor. I was very drawn to analytics. And then when you're mathematics economics, you're really drawn to optimization and efficiency. But when you're drawn to efficiency, you're also going to be ironically drawn to inefficiency. And I really considered entering economics. I got into the top PhD program in economics. But I ended up attending law school at UC Berkeley, went on to work at Silicon Valley's largest law firm, Wilson Sonsini. Um, but while I was there looking to buy a house, I just found the real estate system to be broken. I thought there were so many more improvements that could be made in this industry. And so many of you are in technology, but the key is oftentimes finding, a, finding an industry that is ripe for disruption or change. And sometimes that involves going beyond the norm. And for me, I felt that real estate, the system was broken. How could I improve this? For I didn't think that the client had a great advocate and I wanted to fundamentally change and improve it. So I entered real estate, and within nine years, I became number one in the nation per Wall Street Journal. And I did it kind of creatively. I think one of the keys in life, don't be afraid to stand out. Be unique, be bold. And what I found in life is that I'm just truly myself. I've come so close to death, I've gained a heightened awareness of life. And I realize how short time is, and you want to make every moment matter. And with my clients, I'm just truly free in who I am, and people appreciate that honesty. But the key is, how did I become number one in my industry in just nine years? And I'm going to only share this quickly because it's when I started my own company that innovations began. But the first nine years, I did what other people were doing, but I just did it better. And I was also very bold in my marketing. I tried to stand apart. People, generally when they market, their goal in life is they don't want to offend anyone. But then the marketing is so boring, they don't attract anyone. I tried to have more unique marketing. Um, I did Da Vinci's. Um, anatomy of a great realtor. I did myself as a rock star. I just had fun with it, but I stood apart, gained a lot of attention, but really in the whole time I was formulating a new business model. But the key in life is I've taken some big calculated risks. My success in life has come from being in innovative. And part of it is I found the ability that we have the ability to be alchemists, emotional alchemists. An alchemist, as you may recall, that was in the Middle Ages, somebody who could have theoretically turn copper or a lesser metal into gold. But with the right mindset, you can turn a tragedy or a hardship into your life to a golden opportunity or something to learn from. We can rise above circumstance. And I thought about, my father was a math professor. One time he asked me, Ken, what, what is the purpose of life? And I said, Dad, life is a sine wave. Remember sine wave, you have your ups and your downs in life. And that's the key. When you're falling down, when something bad is happening to you, realize that that is necessary because that hardship, that failure, is the next launching pad to go there. So when I'm in a, I'm in a hard period of my life, I'm just immediately focused on what are the lessons I'm going to learn, and that allows me to handle that hardship. But the key is, life is a sine wave, but what is your angle? We're all going up at an angle, 
Most people are born at a 15 degree angle. They're going up, but they're going up slowly. Everyone in this audience, you were born at a 30 degree angle like I was. We're rising more rapidly. But with the right mindset, we can rise to a 45 or even 60 degree angle. So we're still gonna have our sine wave. We're still gonna have our ups and downs. But know that you can rise with the right mindset and grow. I wanna share with you, um, He's the suspect. this is a, let me actually, I'll go back real quick. Um, I'm gonna share with you one of the tragedies I was in. And then the key was I was involved in a pretty horrific car accident. But what the key to note is that when the reporter speaking to me after I nearly lost my life, I've already moved forward. I've psychologically, um, um, he's the suspect in this vehicle. This is a, just a short one minute video. He held on charges. He drove into 26 year old Kenneth de Leon. <coughs> de Leon flipped over the car, went through the windshield and landed upside down in the front seat. So we get over. He's gone. I see the car about 10 feet ahead, sort of speeding away. My I just father. have to move on. I just have to rehab as much as I can and, and just focus on what I can do instead of what I can't do now. Delray Beach. What I'm so proud of how quickly I recovered and it really was Looks like I, you know. oh, sorry. But notice how I was involved in a terrible accident, just to give you a very quick, I was walking with my father going 45 miles per hour on the sidewalk, car going 45 miles per hour, hit my right leg, there's some bad scarring here. Um, nothing in life is free, if you want to touch the scar, it's $5, kissing's 10. <laughs> but uh, force of the car, I shattered through the windshield. The drug driver, he was on some crazy drugs, drug dealer arrested um, two days ago, just out on jail. He's beating me inside the car. I end up smashing through the windshield, pleading with him for my life for three miles while he's beating me inside the car. But there I am in the, so pretty outrageous story, but life can change like that. But what I did is I realized, notice what my reaction to it. I just need to move on. I need to focus on what I can do and not what I can't do. I need to focus on my recovery. Most people, it could be a fork in your life. You're all gonna have, hopefully no one be hit by a car, but you're gonna have setbacks in life. What you do with that fork is your choice, your decision. You can't control the event. I couldn't control being hit by a car. You can't control a business setback. Your reaction to that event is totally within your power. And your reaction determines the outcome. That event, it seems like a negative event. I nearly lost my life. But I've made it a very positive thing. I've learned so much more in wisdom. I'm taking bigger chances in life. I'm pushing myself more because I realize how life is so short. What were the other reactions I could have? A terrible event happens to you. I could be angry at my attacker. He hit me, and then I'm inside the car, he's beating me. What would that anger do for me? Nothing. I've forgiven my attacker. Not for him, I've forgiven my attacker for myself. I've moved forward. People say, what do you think about your attacker? I don't, I simply don't think about him. You work so hard in your life, control your environment. When someone smashed into my life, literally, I could spend years in therapy, instead I'm just gonna smash him back out. He never belonged to be there, and he didn't. Or what else could I do? I could pity myself throw myself, oh, I'm so sorry, I'm 26 years old, I'm in a wheelchair. No, I decide life is self-fulfilling. If you think you're gonna be crippled your whole life, you will. Instead, I knew I was gonna grow and gain from this. And this has given me the ability to take big calculated risk. Life is so short, people have a lot of fears. A lot of people live a fear-based life. People have irrational fears, or fearful of being eaten by a shark or killer bees. I only have one fear in life. My fear is being mediocre. My fear is being average. It wouldn't apply to Silicon Valley, it would not apply to this room. But in the world, 95% of people are gonna live uneventful lives. You need to push yourself, change it, change the game, change yourself, because it's the one life we have. We need to make it matter. And through that, I've overcome. I've overcome fear of risk. And the second biggest fear in life, I think, is fear of failure. I've flipped it around. I have a love of failure because I realize that failure is where the lessons are. Failure is where the growth are. People as a whole, economically proven, they're risk averse. That way, if you're bold enough to take those calculated risks, you will be rewarded. You will find success in the end because people are fearful of that. But what is the biggest fear in life? After, once you get through fear of failure, you start living just a better life. But the greatest fear in life, I feel, is fear of death. People are afraid of dying. Through all my tragedies, I've now overcome my fear of death. And I can show you this is a, let me show you a video now. So after the accident, the accident led to two cancers. I had a lymphoma, I had a tumor the size of a softball in my leg from the trauma caused by the accident. And then just recently, a year ago, I beat stage three thyroid cancer. Um, and then here's when I found out um, 
I had a big bump in my neck. This is the second cancer. Looks like I this is when I found out. Another lymphoma um, outbreak, or maybe more likely thyroid cancer. They're taking, they just took the biopsy now, I'll get the results soon. When I found out on Friday that I had suspicious lumps that were probably cancerous, within 30 minutes, I just kind of got myself back up. I'm gonna beat this. And even if I don't beat this, I beat my fear of death because I've done everything I wanna do. Of course, of course I wanna live longer. But if not, I live that life I wanted. You know, I feel sorry for the cancer. It just messed with the wrong guy. You don't mess with Ken DeLeon like that. You don't try and take my life. No, 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 you're gone, cancer, you're gone. The philosophies I created. And it goes on, but the key is that fourth tragedy when I came so close to death, I was like, I'm fine. If I do die, and thankfully, obviously, I beat it, I'm fine because I've lived the life I wanted. I took the risk, I have four amazing children, I'm not afraid of death. The secret to overcoming fear of death, leave your legacy now. That I, I think people don't want to be forgotten. But the key is if you live that bold life, create a company, our great parent, great, great friend, anything, you're leaving your legacy now, and that is how you overcome your fear of death. And the beautiful part, once you overcome your fear of death, that's when life really begins. That's when you go to the next level. You can take those huge chances. And that's what I'm doing now. So let me just get to how's that translated into real estate? I simply thought the system was broken. I didn't think real estate buyers or sellers had a true advocate. And it had not, no one had disrupted that system for decades. So you in the audience, you're much more brilliant than I am, but I figured residential real estate, there's gonna be people who aren't that brilliant, who aren't that innovative, I can really change the game. So I fundamentally altered the model. As you know in real estate, everyone's commission based and they're all independent contractors. My model is different. I run my firm like a multi, like a huge law firm. I have 50 plus employees and they're a team of specialists. They're all on salary. No one in my firm is on commission. The company gets commission, but all my employees, um, they're salaried. So that means that you're a buyer. You don't worry about someone trying to close the deal. They're on salary and they're all specialists because I feel a team of specialists can be much better at solving the client's problems than just one generalist. I fundamentally looked at the model, said it's broken, and rather than iterate or slightly improve it, I've just gotten rid of it. So how is that manifested in some of the things I'm doing for my clients? We're viewed as the best real estate firm in Silicon Valley. We spend the most on our clients, but also what I'm trying to do is give my clients the most value and make, why can't the best real estate firm also be the most reasonable for clients? What are some of the innovations I'm doing? I have a buy-direct initiative. If we have a listing and then we bring in a buyer through all of our marketing, why should I unduly profit and get twice the commission? So if we bring in, we have our own listings, we bring in the buyer, we waive 100% of the buyer side commission. Our clients only pay 3%. That's the fundamental flaw in real estate um, that people know there's, everyone builds a company. People generally, most brokerages, they cater to the real estate agent. That's who the client is. They want to bring in the top agents to make the money because those agents are independent contractors. My agents are on salary. I can hire or fire them. I care about the client. I'm building a model around the client. What are, try to ha take a step back. Look at your industry, not from your perspective, but from the client's perspective. You'll gain new insights. Another f issue I saw, I thought there was a fundamental problem in real estate. When you're looking to buy a home, the interests that you have with your buyer's agents, they're not fully aligned. In the sense of when you're looking to sell your home, you and then your seller's agent, listing agent, you have aligned interest. The more the home sells for, the more the agent gets, the more the client gets. Everyone has the same principles, the same interest. On the buy side, interests are actually inversely aligned. The more you as a home buyer pay, the more your agent gets, and then also the less time they're gonna have to spend. So the interests are inversely aligned. As a result of that, people don't trust their buyer's agent. When I was an attorney, my clients would tell me everything, and when I had all that knowledge, I could be the best attorney for them. But when you're in real estate, as a buyer side, I was getting incomplete information because my clients, they, the model is fundamentally untrustworthy. So I thought, how can I flip it? How can I change it? How can I align interest? So the new model I have coming up is a half a million dollar aligned interest program. And I'm just saying that when people buy a home from me or my firm in the cities I believe in, I'm gonna project as long as they own that home for three years, that home's gonna appreciate by more than half a million dollars. And if, if I'm wrong, and I was wrong once in my life, 2002, I've never forgiven myself. Um, just kidding. Um, but if I'm wrong, then I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sell my client's home, not at our profit, but at our cost. So that way we only make money when our clients make more than half a million dollars. And what this does is this aligns incentives because when my clients are looking to buy, they know that I'm focused on them because I don't wanna work for free in the future, I want them to make over half a million dollars. And I've just fundamentally changed the game. And I think the key in life, um, to conclude, take those big chances in life. 
Um, I think my risk gave me a way to look at things in a different perspective. And you have one life to live. Live a life so great you don't fear death. And I think that by being an innovator and founder, you can. It's been an honor and privilege to speak with you. Thank you so much.